this third week, lesson seven, receiving the hundredfold blessing. Amen. <coughs> the background scripture is Genesis 28 and 4. And Malachi. Man 
that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his seed. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sit in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And then our central verse says, Elder Marcel, you want to read our central verse out of our book? Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my sake. And the Gospels, when you shall receive a hundredfold, now in this time, houses and brethren, and sisters, and mother and children, and land, and persecution, in the word in the world to come, eternal life. Mark chapter 10, verses 29 to 30. Mark, Mark 10, 29 to 30. That's the central verse. Amen. Amen. And you want to read the other one also? Truly I say to you, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sisters or mother or father children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as well. This present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields of all persecution and in the age to come, eternal life. Amen. He didn't say it wasn't without persecution. He said it would be with persecution. Amen. Amen. But yes, he was going to make sure the everything, that we have everything. Amen. Our key terms today are hundredfold. That is a hundred times as great as, or as much comprising a hundred parts or members. Stabilize. To make stable, steadfast, or firm. To hold steady to maintain the stability. Familiar, meaning one who is often seen and well known, one who is well acquainted with something. Okay. Our introduction. Receiving the hundredfold blessing. We live in a day when everyone wants to be blessed. Amen? Okay. But few people, few people want to do what receiving the blessing requires. Many pastors, preachers, evangelists, and prophets talk about the hundredfold blessing. But usually they are referring to money. But the hundredfold blessing is more than money. People with a church background have always heard the preacher or the deacon pray that we would receive 30, 60, or a hundredfold blessing as we give in our offering. So naturally, we assume that it means money. Money is included in the return. But the hundredfold blessing is so much more than money. Amen? Amen. Amen. Before we go any further, do we have a thought? Does anyone have a question? Hundredfold blessing. Amen. Uh, 
But the closer we even said, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, and I'll stand in the way of sinners and sit in the seat of swamps. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law does he meditate day and night. Amen? Amen. So, these things, you know, God has prepared for us. Those that have, I, I say, it says in the introduction about everybody doesn't want to do what he requires to get the blessing. Amen. 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 But as we've heard all our lives, some of us, and maybe, maybe some of us have if read, I think I spoke about this a few weeks ago, Deuteronomy 28. If we read that, there's a whole list of things. If we listen to the word of God, and we hear his word, and we obey and do it, there's a whole list of blessings there that come along with those that are obedient. And when you get down to about 20 something, there's another list. And it says if you don't hearken and don't do it, and don't do his word, I believe he cut across some of this here. You bring a curse behind upon yourself. Just like it says in Malachi. It was talking about the storehouse of the priest and what we're supposed to do so that the priest would be provided for and that whoever had need, there would be something there for them. Uh, and said they were cursed with a curse because they didn't obey the word of God. The word had been there already to tell them what they're supposed to do. And they're giving and helping. But we're supposed to obey all the word. Not just some. And it's not just about giving, as it says here. But there's curses that come along with being disobedient. Amen. So our discussion. Um, can you read some of the first paragraph of the discussion? Jesus talks about the hundredfold blessing. In Matthew 13, 18 through 23, where he talks about a sower who sows seed on different types of soil. The parable was given to show how the gospel will be received in the world because the believer's blessings depend on how he responds to the word of God. Some people will hear the gospel but will not understand it. Others will listen to and believe and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but will later fall away. Then others will hear, receive it, embrace it, preserve and bear fruit, flourish and receive the hundredfold blessing. There will always be enemies of God and his word. Satan, worldly concerns, riches and pleasures, but the real love of God will triumph over Satan and all that he has to offer. Amen. That's the one where it talks about the parable of the sower and the seed in Matthew 13, from the 18th to the 23rd verse. How do you say? Some of them, how do you say, it fell on stony ground. You got folks like that to come to church. They come just to come. But when they hear the word, they don't listen. They don't receive it. It just they say it blows off and they keep on going doing the same old thing. You got some that come and they hear the word of God. And the word touches their heart and they feel convicted. And they repent. But the cares of this life, the things the world has to offer, the struggles of life. Where is God? I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And, uh, and they forget the word says that there will be tribulation, there will be trial. They, they forget that the word says it will be with some persecution before you get to these, some of these blessings. And they fall out. They fall away, but they fall out with God. Mm -hmm. so, where is he at? All of this is going on, the pandemic and all of this. And where is God at? We going through all of this. This one has died. That one has died. This is that. This is happening. 
If a guy got to live right, eternal life, you can't stay there to get it. It's only the beginning. You get it, but you got to leave here. To get, the, to get to the blessed hope part of eternal life. Everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. I don't understand. But this is the way the flesh is. Everybody want to go, but don't nobody want to. They don't realize they got to lay down their life and die before they get to heaven. They can't go in this flesh. It's not going. But they're playing God. Oh, he's not just. He's not right because my so-and-so left me and I'm still here and I've got to go through all of this and da 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 Didn't say there wasn't going to be persecution. Didn't say there wasn't going to be trials and tribulation. He said he would be there through it all. He would comfort us through it all. That's those that uh, uh, got snuffed out. The, uh, the, the word came to them and they believed and then they, when trials came, they, they burned up. They didn't have no roots. They didn't take hold. So, then you got the ones that come in, hear the word, accept Christ, receive his spirit. Trials and storms come, but they hold on. Mm -hmm. They witness to others. They bring forth fruit of the righteousness. And there's laid up for them a crown of righteousness. Eternal life and all the benefits even here. Those are the ones that's going to receive brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. Yes. Your people don't have to leave here for you to be losing them, okay? People lose people when they change their lifestyle. You come to Jesus as you are and you receive his spirit. But those that don't want to be no part of Christ don't want to be no part of you either. You got to be realizing that. You got to realize that you have to let go something in some folks. Because God is going to give you a spiritual family that you can work together and, and achieve what you need to in the spirit and they're gonna become your mother, father, sister, and brother. Amen? Amen. He, didn't, he didn't tell you like he told Abraham and Sarah, I'm gonna give you more seed to bring up and all of that that's gonna be godly. That ain't what he's talking about, okay? He's not talking about to give up your sons and your daughters because they're not holy and what have you. He going in your old age give you some more. Mm. Y'all mean Abraham and Sarah. I don't want to be Abraham and Sarah. <laughs> okay. I pray for those that I've raised along the way and if they don't turn, oh well, I've done my part. I did what I was supposed to do. At least they told me I did, so if they don't do it right, it's not my fault. So I'm thankful to know that. But I'm saying, I'm not looking for no loose spiritual sons and daughters yet. Those that I've witnessed to, that I've prayed with, going through the storm with, and they get saved and hold on to, to, to the Lord. And you know what I'm saying? And some of them might look to those that are saved as their spiritual fathers. I heard Elder Vine say about his spiritual father. And I've had my spiritual mother that was there for me, that poured into me when I was going through something, instructed me. Amen? Godmothers and, and, and just those that God put in my life to help me to grow in the spirit and, and, and in love. And yes, they had to lie down their lives one day too. But I'm thankful for the path that they put me on, the things that they put into me, the time that they spent, the tears and the prayers that they prayed, the word that they gave, the encouraged, amen, and correct. Not all encourage sometimes correction. But those are our mother, father, sister, and brother that the Lord gives us. Amen. Amen. Just wanted to clarify that. Because it said in the word that he was going to, you know, if you left your mother, father, sister, brother, wife, children, whatever, for my sake, 
It didn't tell men to go around and neglect their children. That's not what it meant. It didn't tell you to go around and, and, and just cast your parents aside. No. But you can't allow them to interfere with the work of God, with your salvation, just because they don't want you to be saved because they're not in a different kind of life. That's not what you let that go. Amen? You love them, but you let it go. You don't have to hang out with them and go where they go and do the things that they do if they're not living holy. You don't enjoy their unholy atmosphere and activity. Amen? So that's what it's talking about when you forsake father, mother, sister, brother, children, and wife. It's not telling you to neglect it. Don't pay your child support. <laughs> Didn't tell you to walk out on them and don't. Because a father's supposed to guide his children in the way they're supposed to go. But when they're grown, you give them constructive advice and you move on. Amen? But if there's some other person that may come into your life that may be a, a, a young person and God gives you wisdom to impart to them and they glean to you like you're a father figure to them because they didn't have a father. That's your child in Christ Jesus that God has made, how you say, mother, father, sister, brother, whomever, that he's given you in your life. Amen? So just to clarify that, when he's not telling us to, you know, just kill him, kill him and go on about this. No, he's telling us that he will place people in our lives. Our, our godly family is, is an honor. It's a blessing. Amen? Not only that, he said he would give us houses. And I'm sure that's not just our mansion up above, but he's going to make sure we got a place to live right here because he knows we have to be provided for. Unless he called you to do like he did and roam the country to preach the gospel and wherever a oh, oh, door open for you, that's when you go in and you stay until you leave that town. Now, there's people that do that. There's an evangelist I've known that have done these things. If God called you to do that, then he's going to provide a way and open a door to take care of your needs. But he knows that you have need of shelter. He knows that you have need of clothing. He knows that you have need of food. When you're not coming down your plate, he knows you need to eat. He said he will provide all of these things and hundredfold blessings. I believe uh, Proverbs says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will, he will give you the desires of your heart. But that means to delight yourself in the Lord. So if you're delighting yourself in the Lord, the desire of your heart is not going to be to consume something upon your lust. Because that's not, he's not blessing, he's blessing you to lust after something and go give it to you to do the sin. Lust does not have to be a man or a woman. Lust could be anything that's going to pull you away from God. So the hundredfold blessings are the many blessings of God. This next paragraph, Elder Marcel, you want to start reading the second paragraph? This parable tells the believers that the sower sows the word. The hearer receives and seeks forgiveness in his sins, but does not receive salvation and the new birth and never develops a relationship with Jesus. Satan comes immediately and steals it out of their heart. Therefore, they never become a church member, never make a real commitment to Christ, and never let themselves be separated from the world. They fall into demonic bondage, which will not allow themselves Yes, that's why I have a problem with folks that teach this. You come, uh, not that they don't, they don't teach it all. They teach you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. And they do this sinner's prayer: God, be merciful unto me, a sinner, and forgive me of my sins, and and and, and wash me and cleanse me and accept me. And that's as far as they go. They never turn, they never turn from their sin. And then there's some preachers that would teach them. Uh, I had a relative once told me, I said, you said you were saved. Yeah. Well, why are you out here uh, smoking and you got a drink? 
And he said, well, I asked the preacher and he told me if I felt like it, okay. I said, what? But that's what he was told. Because that's what they taught at that particular denomination of church. And it wasn't a holy preacher. Because he, he was sipping too. And he was another family member on the other side of the family. I'm like, so I said, they have not the fullness and the, the fullness of the Spirit of God to have it re he revealed to them the entire word. Because if you see the word in James, it tells us that, you know, that God's children sin not. <laughs> well, the seed doesn't remain, you know, because the seed remains in them. First so they got to the first step, but they weren't told that there's another process that they keep on coming forward to learn of him and then they learn I think have you seen the Holy Ghost since you believe since you believe. everybody had to see it. They never got and some people don't teach that they gotta go there. They teach no man can stop sin. So a lot of folks teach that. No man you won't sin. You can't help but but they forgot if you come to the process and come to Jesus and continue on to know him and seek his face, he will come in and sup with you and make his abode in you. If the spirit dwells in you, you won't sin. Because the spirit won't allow you. But we have to get to the place where we come to his spirit and receive that baptism. Some people say water is enough. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is needed. Because that's the power to free you and keep you. But those are the ones that fell upon, you know, the wayside, stony ground. Heirs came, they couldn't deal with it. Things happened and they blamed God or whatever happened. They, I can't do this, it's too much. And didn't get to their blessing. Didn't get to that grasping of the Holy Ghost to where he helped them to hold on. Oh, it was up. Then you turn your back on him, then you got another issue. But you come to him and you see him and continue on, you, you can bear fruit. Anybody had a thought? Other Martha? Well, um, yeah, I do believe that even those Christians that say maybe have fallen away because of false teachers or whatever. God imparts his spirit in you. And he begins to really work on you, save you, and make a life-changing, cleansing, washing, full of heart, enough of his spirit that you know to go to the first. Now, if you just don't, you can't blame that other person. You can't blame that other teacher. We all have to go after God, have to get in the press for what we want, yeah. what we need from God. And that's not always taught, but that's just being real to God. Yeah. And I believe that we all have that capacity. And if we don't Strive for it and don't achieve it because he said that he would give us his spirit and he said that he would send the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Yeah. Okay, and then it would lead you and guide you to all truth. That's not just talking about man being responsible for you. God is responsible for you, but there are people that he gives his spirit to because the Bible talks about breathing the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You just decide, this is as far as I'm going. That's right. I ain't going no further, and you may take the way out, because that's as far as you choose to go. And you may say, well, so-and-so don't, or those people don't do it. That's why I'm getting with them. That's why I'm going to their church. That's why I'm getting to understand what I'm saying. I know that, because that's what, Basically, let me back to 
church of God in Rand. Okay? I knew these other people were my brothers and my sisters, okay? But they're still, I'm not going to hell because of they're my brothers and my sisters. Mm. They're going, okay? Mm. My passion is to be with the Lord. Right. Okay? And even though we're all God's people, okay, I know I gotta seek my own soul to salvation. That's right. And I know God has got his tug on me, okay? And I'll be crying, Lord, don't let me go. Don't let me go. You know what I'm saying? No matter what I love, no matter what I I love and I want him more. And that's what makes me Trying. And that's what makes me know that I ain't got enough. Or I need another touch. Or I need a, you know what I'm saying? I need a little bit more. Yes. Oh, amen? Amen. And that's what makes me go higher or whatever in the Lord. Uh, um, and even though the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice, that's what makes me lay down whatever I need to lay down so I can get closer to Him. That's right. And it's not a sacrifice. Because he said, if you delight yourself in him, he'll give you the desires of your heart. After a while, that becomes a desire in my heart. Just more Jesus. Just to get closer to him. It's not a song. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Right. It becomes a re and reality. And this spirit yes. pulling me, tugging on me. And I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm in love with him. And he's in love with me. And so because he's in love with me, he ain't going to let me just fall under somebody's hypnotizing me or somebody's um, theology or somebody's whatever. And me say, okay, but that's my way out. Because the bottom line is that, you know, I'm like the old folk, oh, how I love Jesus. Because I love Jesus, and he's telling me, okay, then that spirit is calling me. Yes. Like they be saying the rest of the they drink or whatever, it's calling me. It's calling me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He'll be calling me. And amen. And because I'm pursuing him, and he's pursuing me, and that's our, that's our relationship. Okay, yeah. and that's where the beauty comes in, and that's where the, the, the you get a little bit of, uh, 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 somebody may say you can endure a little something, you can take a little something off of folk, or whatever, because I'm not looking at them. I'm just, you know, actually just being with Jesus, and that's enough. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy to go a little further. Happy to go a little, that's what I mean when I'm talking about old sweet. You know what I'm saying? I sweet he is. You know, the, that makes it personal. Yeah. That makes it personal. And that's what keeps me from falling. And even though there are temptations to out there, and that fellow might be good doing his research and know just what I like, but he can't, that tongue, you know what I'm saying? God still got that tongue. And I said, hey, you know. Uh, I'd rather have Jesus. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And, and I can't blame it on no philosophy. I can't blame it on nobody else. I can't even sometimes even put it in words. But that's because of what God has me. And he just won't let me go. And I'm just not satisfied and I've decided I'm going on a little further. Right. Going on a little further. Sometimes you don't even want it. You say, well, wow. She was pulled up and said, going on a little further. Because he got something better. He got something better. The word tells me the eyes haven't seen, the ears haven't heard. I believe, Lord, I trust you. You got something better mm -hmm. going on in this year. Yeah. It's going to be, you know what I'm saying? In the meantime, you know, if he comes for me and he takes me, well, that's better too. 
as the word, as the satisfied. preacher said, satisfied. Yes, as the preacher said, the other to be satisfied the way you are. And use that as an excuse not to go any further. But that's what we said in the beginning of our lesson. Oh, we all are alike. We all want the same thing. But in the beginning of our lesson, we said we live in a day when everyone wants to be blessed, but few want to do what receiving the blessings requires. Amen. So our next paragraph. Uh, Mother, you want to read for a minute? But the hearer. For the hearers that hear and the receiver receiveth the word, receiving the hundredfold blessing. But he receiving all that thy word promised. Jesus also talks about a hundredfold blessing in Matthew 19, where he tells the believer that everyone who has left the house, or brother, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for his sake, will receive a hundredfold blessing and eternal life. Amen. Hundredfold blessing and eternal life. You want to read further? There are several examples given in the Bible of, the, of those who receive a hundredfold blessing. We will discuss two of these persons. Genesis 12, 1 to 2 shows the believer that God asked Abraham to leave his home, country, relations, and all that was dear to him. He was willing to do that. Not, it's not always easy to quit or give up stuff you work hard for, leaving the only way of life you have ever known to leave the people you love and that you know to love you, to go to a new place, to make new friends, make a new way of living and go where things are unfamiliar to you, but Abraham did just that. Because he did, Genesis 13, 1 to 9, tells the believer that he was very rich in, in cattle, silver, and gold when he went out of Egypt. God blessed him because he was willing to deny himself all the comforts for he was he was used to having. He received a hundredfold blessing from God because of obedience. The believer must be willing and obedient to the will and the word of God if he wants the hundredfold blessing. Psalm 1 tells the believer how to be blessed. He cannot allow himself to become caught up with what the ungodly are saying, but he must prefer God's word over everything. Mm -hmm. He cannot let the news media be the one who gives direction for his life. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 and 33. All right. Thank you. Um, you always have a book. Okay. Yes. He needs to be informed about current events, but he must not govern his life by what they are saying. He must study God's word, think about God's word, pray God's word day and night. Allow the word to stabilize him so that things will not move or change him from the path of righteousness. If the believer wants to prosper and have the hundredfold blessings in his life, he must obey God's word, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, knowing that the first tenth of this increase belongs to God. He must propose purpose in his heart to give according to how God has blessed him. That's part of the obedience. Amen? I just want to say one thing too. I like what he says right here. He said, he cannot let news media become one who gives direction in his life. Amen. Stop watching news so much and listening to all that crap that you want there. Because as long as you're listening to that, then you want, you ain't following the word, you're following the newscaster. You got to do this and you got to do that. No, I'm going to ask God what I'm going to do. I'm not going to 
to sit up there and ask me, he ain't got a bit more Jesus in him mm -hmm. for him to tell me what I need to do. I'm mm -hmm. going to ask God first. And if God leads me, that's what I'm going to do. So, that's what I say about that. You know, mm -hmm. stuff. Stay off the news. <laughs> well, I, 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 I have to confirm with that because I was in the Word yesterday and and I happened to text somebody some scriptures that were that gave me. I gave it to this gentleman yesterday, for the, for the, I never saw it put on there, so what he did, I don't know how he's going to do it. But I, I, the Lord gave it to me and I said, remember, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, prayers, and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And then 2 Timothy 2 and 4. No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And I wrote, and prayer and pr pray, pray and supplication being made daily for all these things, praying and asking God for power to do warfare in the spirit and not be entangled with the world and fleshly affairs, but that we stand for holiness and righteousness in all things. As we see the day of the Lord approaching, mm -hmm. be watchful unto prayer, have a victorious day. That's what the Lord gave me yesterday morning, because people get caught up and want to argue. I got somebody to argue me down, disown me, tell me don't come see them no more. <laughs> about the politi political climate. I said, they all crooks, they all liars, and none of them holy. I don't expect no better from none of them. I pray that the Lord help them, and that they fix things so that we can live a peaceable life and have the things that we need. But it's not just me getting upset because this one lied about that, and that one lied about that, and this one allowed this, and that one allowed. What's, what good is that going to do me? All I can do is pray for them. And I can live holy to whatever decisions they make that I have to live around. And I can keep on praying. You know, that God moves his hand and does what he does. And this is me getting upset, stressing out about it, and fussing because you don't want to agree with this or you don't want to. What difference does that make? That's not going to help me live godly. I just have to pray and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But if I get myself all worked up and upset, that's just hindering my spiritual progress. And folks will fuss and, and almost cuss and go to hell over what's happening in, the, in, in Washington and wherever else. It's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Foolishness. You know, all you can do is pray for people mm -hmm. and pray that the Lord have his way and that things can go... Everybody in the world is not going to go right for it because they sent us. But I pray the Lord have mercy on his people and make a way out of no way. But it is true. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Everybody can leave Egypt. Everybody can go. <laughs> somebody stayed behind because that's what they wanted. And somebody left and wanted to go back the whole trip. And try to deter everybody else to want to go back on the whole trip. Because that's, that's the way the devil that's do things. Why God didn't let them come into the promised land? That's why they didn't get to the promised land. They died in their generations after them got in. Around, because they was too busy the looking backwards. And it's going to be that way until we change our mindset and want to go with Christ and want to be more like him and want to walk according to his will and delight ourselves in him. Amen. Mm -hmm. In our conclusion, <laughs> it says our second example was Job. Yeah. Who the Bible says was a rich, upright man who loved God and shunned evil. This man did everything he could to honor and obey God. 
But one day, misfortune hit his house. He lost everything that he had, including all his sons and daughters. He lost wealth, family, and his health in a matter of days. His wife nor his close friends understood what was happening. His wife told him that he should curse God and die. His friends came and sat with them and for seven days didn't utter a word. When they finally spoke to him, they implied that he must have done something wrong against God. And perhaps this was his way of punishing him. His heart was broken because he knew that he had only tried to please God. But throughout his time of sickness and loss, he remained faithful and true to God. At the end of the story in Job 42, God gave him a hundredfold when he gave him double for his trouble. God will do for the believer as he did with Jacob, who sold in the time of famine. While other people were suffering losses, God gave him a hundredfold blessing. Trust God with everything that you have and let him bless you. Amen? Amen. When you hear of a hundredfold blessing, what comes to your mind? Blessing from God. When you just give him some praise, because the hundredfold is coming along with it. Just got to give him some praise. Whatever God got for you, it's going to come. Just keep on praising him. Okay. And if you need it, God got it all. All you got to do is give him God don't ask for much. It's us that ask for a whole lot. He already said he's going to give you a hundredfold, so why don't you just start praising him in advance? Amen. And when you need it, he's going to shower you with it. And praise he already God. said he's going to give you more, give it more than you can receive it when it start coming. And you know, so that's why I get into the praise. I'm going to praise him. And, he, and God just keeps sending stuff. I ain't even begin to ask him for it. And he keeps sending it. You understand what I'm saying? Because I made up in my mind, I ain't going to keep asking God for something because he already know what I need. So I begin to praise him. And when I begin to praise him, they say when the praises go up, the Bless blessings him. come down. Bless God. You know, and I, like I said, what I said, it ain't got room to receive it. I'm trying to figure out where to put stuff in my house. Hmm. So I had to give it away because I got too much, you know. But yet I'm going to praise him because I know that it's all about the praise. Thank it's all God. about that. It's not about how much offering that you give. It's all about the praise because if you don't have the money to give, God can give you the money. And you'll be like wondering where it's coming from. Just, just, just keep praising him. That's all you got to do when you feel in a certain kind of way. Start praising him. I just found out that my um, uncle died yesterday. Mm. Oh, I just started giving him praise, my father's brother. Yeah, one of the cousins. Mm -hmm. I just said, just give him praise. You know what I mean? What am I supposed to do? Cry and, and fall out and, 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 and go back around the corner and drink? I ain't going to do that because I had enough of that. I'm going to begin to praise him for the life that he had. Doesn't know the same, but anyway, I'm still gonna praise him. You know? Amen. That's it. All right. And we, and we thank God because we do. We're, we're thankful in everything, you know? But this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. We're not to be, you know, anxious for anything, but we're supposed to give thanks. And with thanksgiving, we make our requests known to God. And then we just wait on him and keep on and go about what we have to do. And in obedience to him and enjoy. And before we know it, here it is. Whatever he needs, he, he, he supplies. We don't have to worry. Amen. No sense in praying if you're going to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I, 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 how you say? Situations in my life have changed drastically this year. Yet, I still live by the testimony that my God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I believe that because I have been through experiences in life to have seen 
and never seen the righteous forsaken who receive begging bread. And ain't to beg for nothing. I told the Lord, put the list on the table and put my hand on the knife and said, Lord, show me how to do what I need to do. And the Lord showed me. Do this over here, do this over there, do this over there, do this over there, take this and go shopping. Everybody had He showed me. Then he showed me where to go or how to go. And walk into the blessings that he has for me. I don't doubt the way. I'm just, how you say, walking through the premise. And if it's not meant for me to go that direction and do that particular thing that's going to bring finances in, then I say, Lord, if it's your will. And he let me know, no, he's not going to, that's not what he has for me to do. And then he's going to bless me somewhere else because he's still going to take care of whatever the need is. I know, I believe, I have faith because I trusted him. But I delight myself in him. And that's where it all comes from. That love that you say, I, I love him and he, he just loves on me. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And, and God does just what he said he's going to do. Those hundredfold. I don't do it because I want a hundredfold blessing. I don't do it because I want blessings at all. But he loved me first. So why should not just love him the more? Amen. Amen. So these are the things that God wants to show us. It's not about doing how he said the little bit you can to be saved, you say. The little bit you can, so I can say, I, I I know I'm making it in, I know I'm all right. But you ain't done the whole, you haven't done the whole yard yet. You only did a little bit and left it there. And figure it's acceptable. But God wants more from us. Amen. 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 We want a relationship with somebody. We want it all. Amen. Amen. We want to, we want all of that. And then some. Amen. 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 So therefore, what do you think God wants? Hmm. He created us mm -hmm. for his own. For his own. Amen. To have someone to fellowship with him. To have someone to be a part of him, to have someone to share with. And it offered us eternal life with him. Amen? Amen. Who want to be around somebody eternally? Lord have mercy. Sometimes we do all we can to just to stick around our own family members for so long. Because then they, we, we say, all right, that's enough. Yeah. You know, let me go somewhere and get some time out. Yeah. You know, for God. He want to give us eternal life. Amen. So we don't have to ever leave him. That's some love right there. That's some love. And even death don't do us part. Because the physical death here just means to be present with the Lord. So we thank God for the hundredfold blessing. Amen. 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 So I could be blessed right here in this present world didn't say it was going to come without trials and tribulations. There will be some trials and tribulations along, but the blessings of God supersede all of that. Mm -hmm. The needs be supplied. And not only that, the blessings of eternal life that no one, no man, no boy, no girl, 